Hello there, everyone. This is I, Mark Three, and welcome to a round of Cosmoteer. Hmm, it has been quite a while since we saw this game, hasn't it? But um, I figured since uh, Cosmoteer is starting to ramp up towards a Steam release on Early Access, and it's more or less content locked at the moment. There will still be balanced patches and things as far as I'm aware, but uh, no major additions until the Steam version and the a rework of the campaign gets worked out. I figured, you know what? I liked the messing around in this uh, spaceship building game, so I'm going to come back in. I'm going to play a few rounds in single player. Well, a few rounds, like one round. And we're going to find out how the game is nowadays, because... There has been a bunch of changes, and it's been a long time. So, here we go. We've got uh, hard mode, because yay. <laughs> and I think I'll take a small galaxy. Let's make it a standard galaxy. Sure. I'll just start off with a Model L, because I rebuild the ships anyway. That's one thing I like about this. It's like um, I like to build my ships. So, here we go. Um, just so you know, unlike um, a lot of the other stuff, I'm planning to actually record this episode by episode. So, I'm aiming for a... Yeah, there we go. I'm aiming for a every other... Every other day kind of schedule, as um, I've been trying to do with um, other series currently running. And that means that um, I'll record and release one of these, then there'll be a day of this being up, and then there'll be... The next one, two days later. And I'm doing this so that I can actually respond to any kind of comments if anyone actually feels like leaving them. I probably won't see many, if I'm honest, but uh, yeah. I'm going to try that, because it's been a while since I've recorded in that style. And I'm curious to see how it'll go. Anyway, we start out with the Model L. A lovely, tiny little ship, which is crewed entirely by red shirts, because, of course... And in this game, in the current campaign modes, you play as basically a bounty hunter. You go to a sector, you've got um, multiple enemy contacts, as you can see down here, and you try to shoot them and earn money from them and use that money to upgrade and expand your ship and move on to bigger and better things. There is an active multiplayer scene for this thing, but uh, I've never tried it, so... Hmm. I wouldn't know where to begin, honestly, but I think it's like um, ship battles and stuff for the most part, that one, rather than... The any kind of economy management. Now, as I said, I like to build my stuff, so I'm actually going to delete all this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant to do. Uh, ah, here we go. Yay. Deleted. So that's giving me 60 odd thousand. I've got a button marked Make It So, which applies any changes. So I can edit, go out, come back, yada yada. But we've not got very much. We've got um, like 80,000-ish, but that's still not very much at all. It's very easy to run out with that much. So let's begin with the essentials, shall we? Because remember, you've got to hire crew as well. I think it's under... Yeah, here we go. Control bridge. So that's there. Nice little spot for people to operate the ship. You need at least one. When that dies, your ship is out of control. I'm going to build up a shield generator, just there. Provides a forward arcing shield as long as it's got power. Uh, when it runs out of power, the shield dissipates and is gone. So that's why I'm going to... How do I rotate? Oops. No, that's not it. I'm trying to remember the controls here. Oof. How do I how do I flip things? No, that's what. Mm. Mm. I've forgotten how to flip. Uh... Oh, here we go. Period and comma. <laughs> you know what? I should. I'm normally I normally pay a lot of attention to the tooltips. I should probably keep doing that. Let's also mirror mode it because this is armor plating. This just helps to protect the ship in general. And I wanna try and keep it so that I can actually do something. Let's do it like that for the moment. It's flashing red, by the way, because it's actually disconnected from the main body of the ship, so it's telling me that that's an illegal design. I am aware. 
but I'm building an, a heavy armor prow for the ship, which will help to keep things eh, working somewhat nicely, I suppose you could say. The idea is that if the shields fall, then I've actually got a hole behind it. And this is where I'm going to mount some simple weaponry, because this is just going to be a basic starter ship. So I guess the plan is to kill stuff, so I'll fit a couple of these lasers on the sides here. And this is not very good for engaging the ships up front, but if I'm face on, these turrets will be able to fire, eh, except for right in front of me, which is a bit of a dead zone. Same thing with this one behind it. Good angle. And then I think I'll back it up with some electro blasters, like here. So I've got some disabling effects. Because electro blasters, they can hit components and sap energy, and they are very effective against shields and things. So, you know, good things to have. Okay, next essential piece. We need to have a power plant. Sadly, I saw in the patch notes they've boosted the cost of these things, like, severely. So this is going to do a lot. But there we go. Massive um, cost there, 25,000. So I'm going to be lying mostly on battery power. So there we go. Power storage holds a limited supply of power charged from a reactor, but that'll give available battery reserves just to be installed by people. Oops. I should probably lay in the corridors first. There we go. And I guess another power room up front. Right now it's going to cost us 6,000. We don't have any crew yet, and we don't have any engines, both of which are minor problems, I will admit. But let's keep on going. Got that. We've got four crew incoming. Okay. I'm going to add in a fire extinguisher. Because that will be an ignoble end if my ship simply burned out after just starting this. But look at the cost. We're only at 15 out of 21 and we don't have engines. We need to get engines installed ASAP. So corridors and... Eh, actually, let's mount... I can't put that there because it'll interfere a little bit. But I can mount... Reverse and lateral thrusters there. Okay, 17. I can mount another engine pack there for sideways thrust for strafing. Okay. And I'll mount another corner thruster here. So I've got big rear engines and... Oh, look, my cost is too high. This is one of the things, though. There we go. And I'll add a door just between those. So we've got really dinky engines for the most part right now, but we don't have enough um, we don't have enough capital to fix that just yet. Let's see. You can go through there. You can go through there. You can go through there. Twenty-seven. But that's because we are hiring a lot of crew. So we can turn that down. At the very least, we're, we're going to be understocked on crew, but this is decent amounts. I'm not too worried about the low power level because we've got that battery storage in place. And we've got 11 people, um, seven of which are going to be manning the systems. That's one per weapon turret and one in the control room. So it'll, it will down to the other, the four other people to haul battery packs around. So not ideal, exactly. Luckily, though, we are actually in the starting zone, so, you know, enemies are going to be weak and all that stuff. We can probably do fine. Luckily, there's also time enhancement, so the single reactor is going to take time to charge things up. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. But our objective is, as I said, just to hunt everything. Hunt all the bad guys, and then we'll move out to somewhere else. There we go. Right. So yeah, everything slowly drains power, but power drain is much higher in a battle. That's why I've built up these initial stocks. And I'm going to go after this guy here, because he, it, or she, or it, or whatever, is the first one. So yes. And as you can see, we've got an exterior view. Oi, come on. Move this way. 
think the ship's a tiny bit confused. Also, because it's not really got much forward thrust, it's very slow too. But I like to see the external view. Right. My ship seems to be uh, intent on strafing whenever it can. Yeah, we really need more forward thrust. Ah, here we go. We've got us a locust, apparently. And it is... Alright. So my ship's got more armor, I think. But his has got an ion cannon. <laughs> which is lovely. It's only one weapon, but it's a very powerful forward-facing weapon. It'll probably chew through my shields pretty quick, because I've only got a single layer shield and not enough crew to probably sustain it. But I can target here, so my weapon will shoot at the cannon in a very, very insistent manner. Yep, as you can see, my shield is absorbing the brunt of it, but my shots, the laser bolts themselves do physical damage. And as I said, the ion shots do um, energy damage. I think that we're out of reach of the energy shots, though. Either that or it can't angle properly. Probably can't angle properly. I need to adjust that a little bit. But the laser bolts by themselves have taken care of that ion cannon. Ah, yeah. My ship is trying to get a lot closer. It's just it doesn't have the power to do so. Okay. Now, a ship counts as killed when it loses all reactors. So, let's go ahead. There's no worry about actually shredding the ship at the moment, because the reward we get is based on the difficulty of the ship itself. And yeah, look, my, my two power rooms are actually out of power completely at the moment. My ship doesn't have enough power. There you go, extra almost 8,000 credits. And I'll use that immediately to buy some more crew. That was enough to fill me up, actually. Yep. My ship is now full of peoples. Red shirts for everyone. And they are much better at moving stuff around. Though, as you saw, my power reserve just, like, tanked almost immediately. So I think what I'm going to do is fire one person and install an extra battery pack at the front. There is space for it, after all. 2,700... There we go. That'll give me some extra storage as I move off to deal with this next guy. And I think my next upgrade is going to be... Engines. Ah, stop strafing. You need... We seriously need more power just moving forwards because we just can't chase things around. It's to the point that... Um, okay. And we, our target is the Jetsam... Heavy cannons. Lots of ouchies. However, my ship is kind of well fitted to not really be bothered by that much. And yeah, I think I need to adjust the position of those iron shots a little bit. Oh, oh we've actually blown the enemy ship in half. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I said ouchies, heavy cannons. Um, if, if they can hit on an unarmoured section, the shells actually penetrate through unarmoured blocks. So if one, got, if this armour wasn't here, and there's no shield, and a cannon bolt came upwards like this, it would actually blast all the way through most of my ship. So, you know, bad things would happen. It would start fires, it would damage a lot of rooms, you know. Very nasty penetrating weapons, the cannons in this. But I need to rearrange my engines a little bit. Luckily, though, you do get full refunds for everything you shift around. So I'll do that. I'll move the fire extinguishers there. Admittedly, this, these poke a little bit out the side, but it will give them that extra firing arc so they can actually contribute. I'll install the doors to let people get around again. There we go. Admittedly, it's a little bit more complicated getting past here, but it does give the ability to use my disabling weaponry as well. Now, for engines, this is the big, big, big bugbear thing. We need to get the engines. Hmm. We could install just tri-thrusters. I mean, the... 
We can't cross the physical blocks as you see here. It just like goes, nope, this is in the way. But we can cross um, areas that have to be kept clear, which is the red and yellows. I mean, I've done that with the shield in the middle there. But if I put um, this like that, it reduces our strafe capability for now. But I think I have enough to actually install some bigger engines for forward boosts. Maybe a primary booster? Hmm, I can afford the primary booster. Okay, can I afford the corridor connections? I can! Excellent, okay. That gives us plenty of motive power. Um, and about the same in terms of turning. We can't strafe as much. But I'll be fixing that as we get more money. But this is what I mean. It's like, um, your ship is as good as you pay for. And what you can pay for depends very much on what you can get your hands on. These two looks like they're going to be together. Now, this big engine here is a massive improvement in forward velocity. I mean, look, look at this. We're racing along now. But this thing also has a, an extra booster capability as well. So I can turn it, tell it into boost mode, which will give, increase the thrust, and but drain all the power in it. It's a nice situational thing. Just in case we need to move around. Look how fast we're going. And we are against a Junker, which has got uh, cans and things, but it looks like we're actually against um, two ships now. Which I don't like at all, so I'm actually finding my booster to get clear. The Junker's wandered off, so I'm actually just going to engage the Falling Star now. We took uh, some damage. We actually caught fire. Which is a good thing I had those fire extinguishers installed. But the falling star is... Yeah, there, there's the iron cannon coming in, disabling their lasers. But I'm trying to focus on their cannon, because... I'm just lucky they weren't hitting me with their cannons. The cannons generally have a bit of a shorter range. Yeah, look, look at the damage. My rear, my rear section got a bit battered, and I lost actually one of my some of my thruster capability as well. If that cannon had been hitting me at the back, it would have gutted my ship completely. But luckily it didn't. But my turning ability is somewhat hindered by all this. Defeated. Yeah, that was a more expensive one. But the ship is damaged and I need to repair it. 4,700 to fix all damage. I don't like that my thrust got knocked out, but that can't be helped. There we go. All fixed up. Power supply is holding up great now. And the ion cannons are great at reducing incoming damage as well. It is actually a viable strategy to just build lots and lots of iron cannons. Because they do a little bit of damage by themselves, even though most of the, most of the effect is uh, removing the energy in what they hit. But I could have built a, like a massive bank of uh, ion weapons, and sorry, not ion weapons, like um, electro weapons, in the front of my ship, and that can chew through enemies. It just takes a long time if they've got any kind of armor because, you know, low damage and all that. Plus these things actually need a fair bit of power as well. Okay, we are donezo here. <sighs> okay. Is this the end of Iron Mark III? Is this the end of the campaign? No, no. Those, that, those that, of you that are familiar with the game, of course, know that already. But uh, for those that don't, there is a lot more available in the building tab. In particular, FTL drives, which cost 10k each. That's why I didn't upgrade after the last person, because 10k is pretty heavy. And I wanted to make sure I had enough without having to scrap a load of the ship. But there's plenty of options here for our ship to continue to grow. So if I back this down by a couple, I'll back the uh, crew quarters down a little bit too. Uh, take off the mirror. I'll move the engine, the power room there to the side. Yeah, I'm just rearranging the doors to my satisfaction. Okay, so we've got a little bit of empty corridor there. And I'm going to install a FTL drive. Now, notice those colours. FTL drive. If it, if your ship is too far away, it it makes the ship less efficient. Like, if I put it over here, my ship will be 34% efficient. I mean, even here, it's only 76 because the front is a bit out of the way. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the control room down a little bit and put the FTL core there, which makes us 86% efficient. So, you know, pretty good. That'll be quite nice. And it's also immediately accessible to um, a bunch of other systems as well. So, you know, it's going to be useful. And it gives us a couple of extra spaces to install more stuff later on. So that's 11,000. Can I do something to help with my engines a little bit, maybe? Um, I've got 3,000. I could install a pair of standard thrusters. Or I could, or I could double down on the... Um, the secondaries. Uh, let's do this. Probably re-engage mirror mode. And I think... I can do that. Okay, that's, that's just a little bit too much. So I'll remove some corridor and things. We might have to fire someone to make this um, last upgrade. Why isn't it... Oh, because it's empty space over there, of course. Okay, that's slightly too much. Hmm, that's fine. We'll tear out a couple of doors. We don't need any real doors there. That'll do. So there we go, every last penny, but we have increased our ship's thrust capability a little bit. We've actually reduced our forward thrust slightly, but we've still got a big, big engines at the back there. So this ship should still be good. One drawback is this rear engine assembly is actually sticking out the sides now, so it's not actually covered by the forward shield array. But uh, this ship will be good for most things. Now, efficiency. There's a resource up here, which is FTL fuel. You get that for every kill you make. But it costs FTL fuel to move around the galaxy. Which is this, because it's only a small galaxy. It's um, six systems. Each system's got multiple planets. Each planet has multiple hotspots. And each hotspot has multiple ships. So yeah. And the shield changes based on difficulty of that particular location. So Amateur level, that's where we've been roughly. It's very close by, so it's cheap. Or we could go after some heavier things, like this one's elite, so costs more, stuff like that. But we're not ready for elite or vanguard level stuff yet. We're, go we're, we're still low level, so we're going to jump into an am another amateur sector. Right, it comes in, my, my crew charge up the FTL drive. And then I engage. And we teleport. And now, rinse and repeat. So, at the end of the day, this is very much a ship combat simulator. Now, as I said, it's got a bunch of different things. I mean, look at this. This guy's got a forward mounted electron bolt. My shield collapses immediately because of that electron weapon. But, I have the armor that I installed at the very beginning, backing it up. And that means that my ship can quite handily deal with all this. Sadly, this ship seems to have a bit more thrust capability in general than I do. So my ship is not getting to the distance it wants to, because they have more engine power. That's why my electro bolts are struggling a bit. Now that said, they are extremely vulnerable. Yep, damaging their reactor and their ship brought them closer. They couldn't do a thing. really do need more thrust after all. Okay, I'll just mount some more forward thrust. Because we can now afford it again. Guess that'll do. Couple more engines. What are you could do with a bigger reactor from the time must Okay, this guy's got a forward cannon. Twin lasers. That's that's fine. Our shield will be able to absorb most of that. Until the rest of our weapons can blast it down a little bit. 
No. Yeah, that's another thing. You can shift click and tell it to target different components, but uh, yeah, we've got enough firepower to easily deal with this kind of thing at the moment. And we just keep on hunting. We took extremely minor damage from somewhere. Uh, I think it was probably a glancing hit on the engines that got past the shielding. Oh, hello, it's another locust. Shoot that, then that, please. Yeah, we have we have plenty of power. We have more engine power, so we're dictating combat range. So we're easily getting to close enough for the electro bolts to do their thing. Ha ha ha! We are bounty hunting masters. Oh, it's a an ion frigate. Okay. It's uh, got a single thing, just like the locust, but it's got this focusing prism on the front, which is a newer ion part. Allows the beam to steer a little bit to control where it points at. So I'm going to hit the prism first because you do have to blast through that. It does block shots. Then I'm going to hit the cannon. Then I'm going to hit the actual reactor itself. Yeah, there is a constant noise from the uh, laser beam. However, it seems to have more thrust than we do, so I'm actually going to fire my booster to make sure we get close. Otherwise, it, we'd hang back and it would pick us apart. But now we're close enough. Take that. Yeah. Iron Cannon Frigate, disabled. Well, pretty close, but we, do, we still have to chew through all this armor and stuff, so... Yeah, w without the boosters, um, it, can t it, it dictates the range. But our power supply is actually being tapped out pretty hard. Come on, if we knock out the command bridge, it'll stop moving. Ah, the boosters have cut out again. Yeah, our ship is actually tapped out completely for power. We do need more power. There we go, now it can't move. And it's ours for the taking. Ha ha! Right. That said, though, this is actually the uh, end of the first episode, so I think I'll go on and lay out um, what kind of things I'm trying to kind of do with this series a bit, I suppose, as I install a bit of extra armor plating to try and protect my engines a bit better. There we go. Also, um, yep, yeah, we can afford a new power plant as well. So, the reason why I'm doing it like this, like, um, with hopefully more viewer interaction, is... It means that I can actually listen to you guys if anyone bothers to comment. And so, just let me know what kind of things you want to see. Like, um, right now we're using the laser and electro bolts. We do have a heavy laser turret, which is a bigger, badder version of those, which is actually really decent. We've got ion beams, as you saw, ion prisms. Point defences we're going to be needing anyway, that's a defensive option. But we've also got things like cannons and rail guns and flak batteries and... A whole bunch of missiles, including nuclear missiles. So there's, there are various options with how the ship can try to grow as we go on with this game. And yeah, I think that more or less covers it. Let's just FTL out to over here. We've got another amateur thing, so just harvest this one for more resources. Yeah. I said um, this is uh, Biomark 3, this is Cosmeteer. There is currently a free version available, um, but it is going to be releasing properly on Steam. Uh, early access uh, at some point. I think the plan is to do a general release sometime this year, according to the devs. But it's a nice little combat building spaceship sim kind of thing. Worth, worth checking out if you like this thing. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the show. And I'll catch you all some other time. Come here, my prey. Yes. Oh yeah, I mean, the shields expose that the sides. But my ship can dictate the distance pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. See you all later.